Welcome to the new and approved BCMA podcast show brought to you by our friends with Southern Sound Outfitters. Welcome everyone. This is Jacob and we are back with a brand new episode of the BCMA podcast show. We have some great content coming for you guys and a very good episode today. Uh, Today we are joined by a Texas artist that's up and coming and, and making his name, man, and that's Mr. Mason Lively. He's with us today. How are you doing, Mason? Hey, Jacob. Good to be here. How are you doing as well? Man, we're great. We, uh, we're just coming back from a little vacation ourselves, and uh, we're, we're proud and excited to get back into the groove, and we're proud to have you on as our first guest on the all-new show. Nice, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm really excited to be here. So let's get into a little bit of your uh, background. Uh, you're f- from Victoria, Texas. Uh, you grew up, grew up around that area. Um, yes, sir. What age did you start playing and singing? Uh, well, when I was about fourteen, I uh, well actually thirteen, about a year before that, I started kind of singing along to tunes and uh, that were on the radio or whatever. And I guess. This is after uh, my voice had changed, <laughs> so people started kind of pointing out that I had a decent singing voice, and uh, so I was like, oh, I guess I better take the next step and learn to play guitar. So uh, I did that, and not long after I did that, and it was kind of just one of my favorite tunes, uh, I started writing songs, which was a big deal for, for me, because I had really never done anything super original before that, or been good at anything else. <laughs> so it was cool to kind of start uh, honing my craft at, at writing and, and even performing, playing little bars around Victoria area at, you know, 16 years old. Well, that's awesome, man. And you're still a young guy, man. You're 21? Yes, sir. 21 years old. You'll be 22 next month. <laughs> well, happy early birthday, man. And I, you mentioned songwriting. I'm a huge fan of songwriting and lyrics and music and uh was that an easy transition to start writing your own music, or you found it pretty easy? Um, you know, I wouldn't say easy. I mean, those first few songs I wrote were not very great, but it's like everything else. You got to kind of just keep doing it and get feedback and don't be afraid of criticism. And uh, eventually you'll run into to that song or that little batch of songs where people are like, okay, that's actually really good. And, and you learn from that, okay, what made this song good? Is it the melody, the lyrics, or tempo? And, and you take all of that into account when writing songs and, and just kind of also... But you can't be too formulaic about it is what I figured out. you got to also really just kind of feel it to whatever uh, whatever your soul tells you to do with that song, you know? <laughs> that That's it, brother. I mean, to me, that's country music. Uh, or, or really most music. It's... Yes, telling the story of emotion and feeling and you can live throughout that song um so before we jump forward into your music uh, i have to ask well, who were some of your musical influences growing up down there in victoria texas that you you listened to and, and just all around made you you know love mu- country music man i had a uh, as far as country music goes i grew up spending a lot of time around my grandparents and uh you know that was the the uh, Conway Twitty and uh, George Jones and even getting into like Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard and just those those classic guys I, I got to grow up on and spend a lot of time listening to so that was really really cool and at the same time like I had a grandma that loved classic rock like uh, the Eagles and Creedence oh. Clearwater oh, yeah. and uh, also she loved soul too like stevie wonder and ray charles and i grew up on a lot of that stuff too and so it's it's been you know blues and stuff my, my parents listening to um not only what was on the radio at the time but blues music and even like texas country music which kind of got me into that whole scene the robert O'Keens and pat greens of the world so i, I i'm really kind of a melting pot of <laughs> a lot of different genres and well, that's it awesome, man. Like growing up. That's definitely awesome, and uh, it creates an artist that's very unique, you know, whenever you can hone in on all those. Personally, myself, I'm not much older than you. I'm only 25, but I know I grew up listening to those same. And also, I was a 90s baby, and I loved 90s country music, and that 
all, just drew me into that that not to me you know i know i'm a younger yeah, gen- yeah, and all those guys you know tracy lawrence and and uh travis tritt and dude i got to open for tracy lawrence uh, a month ago in salado texas that's and awesome that was so cool i was i was sad stage like one of the fans man saying i wanted every two oh <laughs> and and tracy I, I got the opportunity to meet him through mutual friends and stuff and i, I still go to every one of his shows plays it sounds the exact same to this oh, yeah. day like it would be off the radio, and that amazes me, man. But let's get into you and your stuff, man. You released uh, your 10-song debut album, Stronger Ties, back in April of last year, 2018. Uh, which song from this record might say your personal favorite or your personal, you know, to play or that you had to writing in? Ooh, that's a... Uh... It's a tough one. I know, I, I think each, kind of each category has its own song in it. Like, as far as favorite song to play, uh, Heavy Toll, which is the first song off the record, is very rocking, very driving song, and that one's just very fun to play. We like to close out the show with that one, so it, it puts a nice little bow on things after we put on a good show. And um, as far as personal song to me, songs like Worth the Fall and Hard to Let Go, really fall under that that personal category and everything like that and yeah man i think each uh like what you said earlier what makes a unique artist is kind of also putting your own style on each song and on this record it seems like not really trying to make it happen this way but it seems like every song kind of has its own little style in a way and, and it definitely i think it's a very unique record it definitely is i've listened to every song on it and it it has your every song on it is a, can be a different a different feel different it's not just all sad country it's not just all up rocking in your face each one is very unique and very good man i, I mean uh thank you man i'll listen to it and uh man we uh we, we added your, your one song off of the of the uh, album early grave uh to our bcma top 40 spotify playlist and ultimately going to be on our chart this friday um currently you know with numbers it's uh in the top 30 you know i'm not gonna but it's got almost twenty thousand streams on spotify tell us a little background on that song in particular that song is actually one of the oldest and thank you for forgetting all the playlists and stuff too that, that's awesome man i'm glad y'all take the song um that song is one of the oldest tunes that I've written, I think, I probably wrote it when I was like 17, and uh, it's one that I just, I kind of held on to, or wouldn't really uh, go away, <laughs> in a sense, because I, I would play it live, people would just love it, and I'd be like, alright, and like I said, a lot of the older songs I wrote, I kind of, I, I didn't really get to hold on to, because I was still, I felt like I was still learning how to song write, and, and uh, get the whole, you know, feeling down, and everything like that, of songwriting, but, I guess that song was good enough to, to stick around and when we planned which song to record for our debut album that was that was a top contender and it's just fun it's got a nice little story wise it's it's just like every other kind of classic country song about the woman leaving you and you're you're drinking and everything like that and you're, but it's got that <laughs> rock it's got that kind of rock and roll type vibe man oh yeah it's definitely a I song a sad song lyrically but it makes you and make you get up and go, and, and want to do something, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. I love the uh, the way it was produced, too. The, it, it had a totally different... Um, it took a different direction than I thought it would when we went into the studio with it. Um, I had originally just imagined that song to be just all screaming guitars the whole time, you know? And uh, it was my producer, Pat Mansky, that threw out the idea of making a little bit more kind of a muddy, almost bluegrass folk feeling, especially at the beginning, yeah. it does that too, with the banjos and, yeah. and everything like that, and, and the fiddle. And then as the song progresses, you, you know, the, the electric guitars kind of grow into it, and it becomes a, just a real rocker, and, and I love the way that thing was produced, for sure, man. Well, we, have, turned out. we have the song here with us, and uh, we're going to play it for the listeners, and uh, I'll let you introduce it, and we'll let you introduce the song, play it, and come back and talk a little bit more. Cool, all right. My name is Mason Lively, and this song is Early Graves. Woke up 
up this morning with a bottle in my hand. Trying to figure out what happened last night. Trying hard to understand. Then I remembered my baby walked out and said that she was through with me. She said she didn't love me anymore. And I swore it was the death of me. Smashed that bottle on the living room floor And I got down on my knees And I threw our pictures in the fireplace And I watched them burn to smithereens With the liquor coursing through my veins It all still feels the same And I've come to a conclusion That that woman is the one to blame Oh, whiskey blues, won't you sing me home? She's holding that shovel It's digging me in early grave Of a better man And as for that devil woman She gonna get what she deserves someday All the people might think that I'm crazy But it's kept me from going insane Oh, whiskey blues, won't you sing me home? Cause I swear that a woman's heart is made of stone She's a holding that shovel It's digging me in her in the grave I swear she's a devil She's a holding that shovel It's digging me in her in the grave You just heard Early Grave by Mr. Mason Lively. He is with us today. Uh, we're joined with him. We've been talking about his 10-song record, Stronger Ties. And, uh, man, it, this, I mean, I know it's almost coming up on, what, a year and a few months since you released it. Uh, how has the experience been since you released this album? Man, this record has done more things for me and for my team of, you know, my band and my managers that... I never thought it would. Um, when we released this record, we really kind of didn't know what we were doing. We just know we just knew that we had a group of songs that that were great and, and unique, and we thought we could reach people. And since then, it's it's uh, opened doors for us to the right people, and uh, it's got us on stage with some legendary folks and got to open some amazing shows and play some amazing shows. So. Well, let's it get, was a great. Let's get great into that. Let's get into that, man. What was who was some of your favorite big timers? I guess that you got to play with from this. Dude, we've we've gotten to open for, for from like like I mentioned earlier, like all these '90s country heroes like Tracy Lawrence, Mark Chestnut, to uh, to uh, even some mainstream guys like Jarvis Turner, Brothers Almost Born, to all the big Texas country acts, Pat Green. Uh, Wade Bowen, Randy Rogers, Parker McCollum, you know, uh, we've been all over the road opening for some incredible shows and we've been very grateful for it, for sure. That's awesome, man. If you had the opportunity for the future to s- maybe do a duet or, or make a song or write a song even with anyone 
alive in in any music genre, who would that be? Man, just because it's fresh on my mind, because I've been uh, I was texting him earlier today. Uh, I think uh, I've always admired Wade Bowen's uh, the way he crafts a song and sings a song and his melodies and everything like that. And, and uh, I was actually we're going over some tunes that I'm planning on putting on the next record, and uh, I'm like. Man, I bet our voices would sound good together. <laughs> Thinking to myself yeah. on this too, and you know, yeah. so that's like that's a cool one that, that I, I see feasible and, and, and something that could really happen here in the near future, hopefully. Uh, but as far as just like out of this world stuff, um, hell, I don't know. Bring a uh, bring Van Zant from. Uh, Skinner back from the dead. Let's do it. Do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. That's that's the uh, the the uh, dream right there. That you gave us you gave us the reality, and then you gave us the dream. I like that. And uh, Wade is definitely a, an extremely talented artist, and uh, uh, you know, just all around. So that would be awesome, man, to get you two on on a track together and sure. uh, going. And I'm sure it would just blow up in Texas country and really all over thank you man yeah that hoping something like that happens soon well man you you definitely uh all over been touring and stuff man and i know uh i just looked up a few of your upcoming shows and i mean this saturday may 25th you'll be at the lone star jam uh in austin texas and then the friday following this is a pretty big deal at the silver saloon opening or playing up with Sam Riggs, who we had on the show in the past, awesome artist, oh, in uh, yeah, in down there in Terrell, Texas, and then July thirteenth at the Blue Light in Dallas. That's like the the Texas who's of who go. You know what I mean? So that's awesome. Oh man. yeah, that's awesome. Which uh, which upcoming shows are you looking most forward to? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to all those. This will be like my first Lone Star Jam, and that's a pretty big festival they have there in Austin. And- so many great names on that, and I'm looking forward to to debuting on that one. And uh, yeah, there's other other couple you mentioned as well. There's so many dates on Maysami.com that I'm looking forward to, and uh, one that I'm really looking forward to specifically is uh, Lukenbach, Texas, June first with uh, Aaron Watson and Kyle Park, just because I hadn't played with any one of those guys in a while, and. Uh, Plus, it's just looking box Texas, you know. It's always yeah. a good time. Okay. Waylon and Willie and the boys. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Man, that that's some great guys. Uh, definitely, uh, Kyle's a f- friend of the show. We had him on a while back when he de- you know first come out with his current album, and uh, great guy. Oh, yeah. uh, He's a gr- great dude. For great, sure. great producer as well. You know, as well as artist. Um, and uh, we've had Sam on the show, and I was blown away by how nice of an individual he was, man, just talking to him beforehand. You know, we had never spoken. Sam Riggs is definitely that alternative-style artist out there in Texas, But and you mentioned Parker. He's kind of kind of on the same level, man. So uh, that, that's awesome to, to see, and, and the the... To me, there's so many great artists in, in, in your state of Texas that's, you know, we've had some on the show, the pleasure, you know, but it seems like Texas country music has like five different genres in itself. You have your, oh, yeah. you have your classical traditionals of, you know, Randall King and Josh Ward and, and even up and coming Tristan Merez and then you have your guys kind of in the next level down like Kobe Cooper and Dylan Willer and Chris Colston then you have the 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 rock the rock kind of guys that you know like Co and uh you know Reed Southall and and Flatland Calvary and then you go into the the guys like Sam you know and Parker and and even yourself man so what what is your uh favorite thing I would say about you know you got to grow up in Texas and I lived in Texas for a while. I fell in love with the music down there. It's like a whole other world. Um, oh, yeah. How can you best describe to listeners that maybe don't know much about the Texas country scene? Just describe the, the, the friendship and the family-type atmosphere, man, of all artists. Oh, yeah. There's there's definitely a lot. And that's just, I feel like that's just Texas in general. It's, 
which is very friendly and, and everything like that. There's camaraderie like crazy, especially amongst the artists. But um, yeah, man, I always tell people there's there's something for everybody in Texas country and Texas. Uh, I mean, I know people don't even like to call it that. Texas country, Texas music, whatever, whatever this kind of scene is. There's something for everybody, man. If you don't like the the cowboy country or whatever, yeah, there's there's the rocking guys. If you don't like this, there's that. There's, I mean, that's that's what it is. And you know, I I was lucky enough to be a fan of, like I said, not only every type of music growing up, but every type of Texas music from the more folk singer songwriter stuff to the rocking stuff to the the cowboy country stuff. It's just it's just all kind of blended in it to to me and. Uh, that's why I kind of put out music that gives homage to, to each one of those little subgenres. And yeah, I'm, I'm proud to be part of the scene for sure. And I know that we are Bayou Country Music Association. We are located in the great state of Louisiana. But I push Texas country so much because, like you mentioned, the people that don't really know about it, it when you get into it, you see all the different variety of artists and styles but you also see the camaraderie and the family type atmosphere they have with each other that man texas artists and one of my faves that i i put up there two of these the two guys that i think of the most that have just busted 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 and finally getting this nashville recognition and that's aaron watson and cody johnson and those oh, yeah. you know that that's the that's the example i give people like these guys started and did their whole careers in texas for a decade almost you know had their own fan and could have stayed there and been just as successful so to see it come in nashville now and, and see you know those guys taking off and even doing shows and 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 you know concerts with like Luke Combs, one of my favorites in mainstream, and seeing all that man and Jacob Bryant, and it really gets the Texas country scene on the map of the whole world. And I know I know you guys don't need it down there because you guys the Texas scene is just you know like I said a family type. But it, I try to push it as much as I can because of all the great artists that you have down there that's pretty much all independent that's what's amazing you know very I, much so yes sir and uh you know there are people that will yeah that will kind of talk down on that or disagree with the people who who take the mainstream route after really grinding and busting for for years in the texas scene but i i say you know i think this is exactly how you put it man this is this is a way to bring texas music and these kind of artists and this kind of independent creativity to the to the world, you know. Exactly. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. And th- these guys have not changed one bit since you know grow- going to net playing all over. You know, mentioning Kojo playing at little dive bars in, in Texas in the beginning, now selling out arenas. So it's the oh, same yeah. guy from day one, and he he's not he, him and Aaron both great individuals, and they're not going to change for the industry. And that's also another great thing to show about the Texas industry and the Texas music scene is each artist, for the most part I know of, does not change for anything else than who they are. The originality of each artist is amazing and how they don't let... Because a lot of artists that go to Nashville end up changing who they are to try to be big timers and, and their originality isn't there and that's why I'm, I really don't listen to much mainstream you know radio country radio anymore uh, I'm so deep into discovering you know new artists that are independent but because I love that originality and that original content and that original style but you're definitely one of them man and, and I personally apologize i didn't figure didn't discover mason until just a few you know a few weeks ago and uh just was like wow where why did i not you know but that's how it is man there's so many great artists down there that it just it blows my yeah, mind you can get lost in, in really discovering like oh there's this guy too yeah or, yeah you know why have i not heard of this guy and, and yeah for sure and i think uh well thank you uh it's always really cool to be part of something like this and and i love playing in louisiana too man shoot you know some great artists that come out of there too there's a guy a kid named michael boudreau michael scott boudreau who uh is from uh lafayette that i've written a couple tunes with he comes down to uh texas every once in a while and writes with me and plays a couple shows around here so 
Yeah. Yeah, Listeners, be sure to check him out, too. He's got some big stuff coming in the future, too. Oh, yeah. We have so many talented artists down here in this state, man. And, uh, I mean, we've had a great week uh, as Louisiana music. I mean, we had American Idol winner uh oh, yeah. lane my, my good buddy lane hardy at win it all and uh guy thrigden on the voice ending up in the top two and uh you know there's so many i mean we have the, the guys like dustin sonia from here that is big time on texas radio now and uh ashton dupre and a few others that are good i mean we have those guys and it seems like they're they're they move towards that texas scene because of the family atmosphere and i pray one day we can have that here in Louisiana, oh, yeah. because there is the talent there, man. It definitely is. For sure, man. For sure. But man, I uh, I definitely appreciate your time and uh, being on the show. And uh, you're 21, about to be 22 years old, and you're set up on a great path right now, man. I think you're gonna have much success with the talent you have <laughs> as an artist. And uh, I always say it, man. Once you're on the show and part of the, you know, BCMA. Your family, you all can, always can come back. Always can come back on the show. Always can be in contact, man. We do whatever we can to help you, you guys. So uh, definitely, don't be a stranger. Dude, thank you so much for that, man. I really appreciate uh, being on your podcast. And next time we're in the area, man, y'all be sure to come out to the show. We'll hang out and party. <laughs> yes, sir. We certainly will have to do that. Um, and of course, I always like to thank the many partnerships and friendships that we have with these individuals and companies and managements that help, help me do this for these artists and, uh, just a few, I mean, of course, Southern Sound Outfitters has been with us since day one, a great organization, uh, pro country blog, uh, my buddy Justin with them, he does some great interviews. They actually did one of, of us and we did one with him. Uh, as I mentioned before, the Texas Country Music Association, we are proud members, and uh, they do great things, Miss Linda and everybody that runs that with the awards and everything. And sure. um, Special shout out to Miss Jennifer with, with Generate Promotions. I mean, she's the one that's helped me get all these great unknowns discovered, including Mason and uh that that's something awesome and two new ones we've just just recently f- bound up with is uh trick 44 entertainment out of texas uh promotion management company and then it, we wouldn't be by you without representing by you and that's by you limits apparel definitely check our buddies out with them and get some of their merch if you like to hunt and fish and represent the bayou state and i can ramble on and mention a lot more but we or short on time, and today we got to call it quits on this one, man. We had a great time listening and talking with you and learning about your music and your background, and I hope the fans enjoy, and you can be sure to check out all of Mason's tour information, everything on the social media pages and website, which I want to say is MasonLively.com, or is it Mason Lively Music? MasonLively.com, yes, sir. Yeah. Mason Lively on any social media you got. Yeah, be sure to come on out to the show, and, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you to uh, all the sponsors as well, and to Jen as well. She's she's a homegirl, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll see you soon, man. Thank you so much again. Yes, sir, and be sure and get his album, Stronger Ties, on all music platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, the whole nine yards, Stronger Ties by Mason Lively. You won't be disappointed. And be sure to check out this this week. We get we got this new top forty chart dropping, and, and Mason's on there. And to get those streams up, you check out our Spotify playlist, and we always share it on our uh, on our social medias and stuff. But big things coming for Mister Mason Lively, and we are happy to have had him on and welcome him to the BCMA family, man. So we appreciate it, and uh, we'll we'll let you sign off and say any kind of last goodbyes thank you so much uh thank you so much i i really appreciate it you guys uh again yeah be sure to follow mason on any kind of social media check out strong guitars playing on recording a new album later this year so uh i'm glad to be part of the family man thank you so much again well you're welcome brother Thank you for listening to this episode of the BCMA Show Podcast. Available on Spotify, iTunes, 
iHeart Radio app, and our YouTube page. For more information, be sure and check out our website, bayoucountrymusic.com.